What's good, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. I'm going to talk some gaming today. Well, today I'm going to be bringing you my Cyber Dark style uh, deck profile. I've been messing around with this deck a little bit. I've been having a lot of fun with it. Me and Terror Master had a talk about it a little bit before. And uh, yeah, it's actually not that bad. If you're into Cyber Darks, I highly recommend playing this deck. Uh, it's just susceptible to Cosmic Cyclone. That's really the biggest weakness that I find. Oh, and DD Warrior Ladies. But, you know. Oh well, the deck's still a lot of fun to play, and uh, it's actually not that bad if you can actually pull everything off, so it's, it's you know, fun. So, highly recommend it, and without further ado, I'm going to jump right into this. The skill we're playing is Cyber Dark Style. This is a really neat skill that can be used three times in one duel. Once per duel, choose three Cyber Dark monsters from your deck. Your opponent randomly adds one of them to your hand, shuffle the other two along with one card from your hand back into your deck, then flip this card over. This skill can be used up to three times, once when your life points are 3,000 or less, once when your life points are 2,000 or less, and once when your life points are 1,000 or less. So you get to use this skill up to three times per duel, usually only use it like once or twice, it's not like a skill I'm using that many times, but it's still a really, really good skill. Uh, for monster cards, we're playing Cyber Dark Horn, who, uh, when it's summoned, all of these do this, equips a level 3 or lower dragon monster from your graveyard to it, and it gains that monster's attack. And uh, when this card attacks a defense position monster, it inflicts piercing damage. But it also has another effect that they all have that says, if this card will be destroyed by battle, destroy that equipped monster instead. So it has a little bit of a protection cost from battles, which is really, really cool. Now, Neil does the same thing as equipping the level 3. It can't be destroyed by battle once per turn because you can get rid of the equipped card. But also has the ability where if it, gain, if it uh, destroys a post monster by battle, it inflicts 300 damage to your opponent. And then Edge, again, does the same thing. Quits a uh, level 3 dragon, gains that monster's attack, can't be destroyed by battle once per turn because you can unquip the material instead. And then also has the ability to uh, attack directly, but your attack points are half. So this is arguably one of the better ones of the three. Like, I like this one a lot. And then we have the best Cyber Dark card. <laughs> like, hands down, this card is the best Cyber Dark monster. Now this card reads, if this card is sent to the graveyard while well, equipped to a monster, you can target one Cyber Dark monster in your graveyard and add it to your hand. Uh, and then it also has this effect where you can discard this card and add one Cyber Dark Spell Trap card from your deck to your hand, and during the damage calculation of a monster equipped with this card battles, you can send one monster from your extra deck to the graveyard. So it's a very, very strong monster card. Uh, it opens up a lot of opportunities for this deck, uh, mainly from this effect here. You can discard this card, add one Cyber Dark Spell or Trap from your deck to your hand. So you discard this card from your hand when you have 3,000 less life points, add your spell card, and then you have your Dragon Monster in your graveyard and the spell card in hand, and you use the Cyber Dark Style and get one of these three pieces. And then what you do there is you just return the Impact to hand. The card you added off of the Claw just gets added back, so it's, it's really nice. Lastly is the DD Warrior Lady, I'm playing at 2 in this build, you can play it at more if you want, but I'm playing at 2 just to keep the space, and uh, yeah, it's one of the best cards in the game, so I highly recommend playing it. Again, we're playing the Impact at 1, uh, no reason to play it at any more than that, very solemnly are you actually fusion summoning out the Cyber Dark Dragon, you're usually uh, running around with your main deck monsters, but it's in here just in case you get to that point. Triple Cosmic Cyclone into this deck. Um, biggest reason is because you pay a thousand life points and then you get to use your skill. Foolish Burial's in here, that way you can get your claws to graveyard if you don't have them in your hand. Uh, Offerings to the Doom is played at two in this deck, that way you can clear the DD Warrior Ladies or the Zomas. And then uh, Wall of Disruption is also in this deck because uh, it's an easy way to make your opponent kill themselves. So best uh, battle trap in the game at the moment. And then two Zoma the Spirit. Uh, again, you know, one of the better cards of the game, so I've been playing it at two uh, for this build in particular. If you notice, this deck's playing a lot of the uh, generic cards at two in the list, just because you want to make room for your uh, plays more than anything. Side deck is DD Crow. Uh, this is just to hit uh, pesky cards in the graveyard. I've used this to hit the Ritual spell uh, from the Cyber Angel deck, so that's Pretty much the big thing I've been using this for. My third DD Warrior Lady sitting in side deck in case I ever so need her. Usually in the SPA matchup. Floodgate Trap Hole is also in here for 
SPA, Cyber Angels, pretty much anything I can really utilize it for. And then Lost Twins in here for any of the extra deck summoning decks or, you know, any decks that really special summons a monster because they can target any special summon monster. And then our extra deck is the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon S3 and the Cyber Dark Dragon S3. Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon playing S3 in here because of the claw. Because of its second effect, it says during the damage calc, if a monster uh, equipped with it battles, you can send a monster from your extra deck to the graveyard. So you send the ultimate dragon, and then when if you do get to summon out the cyber dark dragon, you get to use its effect, equip the ultimate dragon to it, making it a 5500 attack point that gains 100 attack for each card in the graveyard. So it's very, very good. Again, highly recommend at least try this deck out. It's a lot of fun to play, and if you haven't tried it yet, it's like this is the perfect deck opportunity to try it with. Like use this deck. <laughs> it's so much fun. Uh, without further ado though, I'm going to jump right into the showcase. Alright, so we're playing against Yuri and their Diamond Dude Turbo deck. This deck is actually a lot of, like, this deck is really cool. Like, arguably probably one of the better decks. Like, top 10 best decks, honestly. Sets the Wall of Disruption face down, and sets the Zone of the Sphere face down, passing the turn off to us. We'll draw for turn drawing into the Horn. And then what we'll do here is we'll use the effect of the Claw, like I said previously, sending it to the... Gr I accidentally said the edge to the graveyard. Sending it to the graveyard, and then when we do, we're just going to grab the impact to the hand. Um, summoning the edge here, we're going to use the edge to eclipse the claw. The reason why we summoned the edge over the horn here is because I didn't want to give him any knowledge of my hand. So I just summoned the edge, worst case scenario, and then equipped the claw to it. Setting the wall of disruption, and I believe, yeah, I set the offerings to the doomed. So Zoma and wall of disruption are face down. Attacking directly for the 2400, Zoma gets summoned to the field. And then I'm going to use the effect to replay my attack and attack my opponent directly for 1200 damage. Passing turn off to the opponent. Uh, they're just going to completely pass turn. On end phase, I'm going to sink, but then decide, you know, it's fine. I draw for turn into the Foolish Burial. Um, and then go to my standby, go to my main phase one, go to my battle phase, and just attack directly again for that 1200 damage, dropping down to 1600 life points. And they turn off there, they draw into the Diamond Dude, which is really nice for them. Using the looking into the future, going to put the beginning of the end, the reinforcements of the army, and the Diamond Dude. The card that they put back is going to be the probably Diamond Dude. And then it goes the beginning of the end and then the reinforcement. Summoning the Diamond Dude here, we're just going to offerings to the Doomed on the summon, sending it to the graveyard. And then they set the beginning of the end face down. Uh, I draw for turn, can't draw because of offerings, go into battle phase and attack directly for 1200, they'll drop down to 400 life points. It's odd to me at this point that they have acted the wall of disruption, but I'm sure they're just trying to get to that hurricane. Going into the reinforcements of the army here, they're going to grab the Destiny Hero Diamond Dude and then summon the Diamond Dude to the field using its effect because they can't use this since they use reinforcement this turn. And then its effect is going to reveal, I believe it's Zoma, if I remember correctly. No, it's just another Diamond Dude. So the Diamond Dude is going to be, oh, to the bottom of the deck because it's not a spell card. Any turn off here, I draw for turn, drawing into the Warrior Lady, set the Warrior Lady face down, and then attack directly for 1200. And they just admit defeat. Again, I don't know why I didn't get Wall of Disruption there. Like, it could have dropped me down, what, 16? I guess they still lose there. Oh well. Yeah, I feel like they would have been in a better situation if they had Wall of Disruption sooner, but... Hey, whatever. <laughs> uh, going into our next turn, I start off with the Foolish Burial and Neil, and that are often make me go second, so they're going to reveal the top three off of their skill. Skill cards are going to be Warrior, for Reinforcements, and Diamond Dude. Probably putting the Warrior up first. Probably next is going to be the uh, Diamond Dude, and then they put the Reinforcements to the top of the deck. Summoning the Diamond Dude here, they're going to mill off the Diamond Dude, or not the Diamond Dude, the Reinforcements, and then set the Wall of Disruption face down, setting the Astrophil, or Scale back face down. So Wall is back to the field face down, and it's going to be our turn. I draw for turn, drawing into the Claw. Using the Claw effect here, I'm going to discard it, and then I'm going to grab the uh, Fusion from my deck to my hand, the Cyber Dark Impact. Um, I summon the Neo here, and then I'm going to eclipse the claw to it, making my monster a 2400 beater. And then I'm going to set the wall of disruption and battle into the diamond dude. 
opponent will drop down to 1,000 attack points. I'll use the effect to kill here and deflect 300 more, and then pass my turn off to the opponent who draws into another Destiny Hero Diamond Dude. Using the effect of reinforcers of the army here, they're going to go ahead and add a warrior from their deck to their hand. And it's going to be another Diamond Dude. At this point, they are going to activate the skill, revealing top three, putting one of the other cards face down. Probably want to put their Hurricane last, and it seems to be the case. Summoning the Diamond Dude here, using its effect, and then milling off the Hurricane. That way, their next turn, they can just blow up every card on my field. Going towards the end phase here, the end turn. I draw for turn, drawing into the Zoma. I lose everything my next turn, but I go ahead and set the Zoma, and then attack into the Diamond Dude. Activating effect again to inflict 300 damage to the opponent. The opponent's going to draw for turn, drawing into the beginning of the end, using the effect of Ojama Delta Hurricane, sending all the cards on my field to the graveyard. Oh, they didn't use Delta Hurricane, they used, oh, the beginning of the end. My bad, that's why I used this. So they're drawing three off the Zoma, Rising Energy, and uh, another Zoma. So they got plenty of traps to go, setting the DD Warrior Lady, setting the Zoma Spirit, and then setting the Rising Energy. I draw for turn drawing into another Claw, go into my main phase one, summon the DD Warrior Lady, and attack into the face down card being the DD Warrior Lady. Both of them will be banished from this attack. And then I will attack directly with the Neil. They're going to activate the Zoma Spear here, summoning into the field in defense mode. Uh, I sink here and then decide to attack into the Zoma, use the effect of Neil to inflict 300 damage, and I will take 24. I use the effect of Claw here, this is going to send the uh, Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon to the graveyard, and the opponent goes into their turn, drawing for turn to the DD Warrior Lady. Going into main phase one, using looking into the future here, they go ahead and mill the top three colors of their deck, being the Delta Hurricane, the Wall Disruption, and the beginning of the end, putting the third card to the top of the deck, being the, I think that's the Wall, and then the, they're probably going to put Delta to the top, yeah, that's exactly what they're doing. So, that, uh, Delta Hurricane's down on the top of the deck, going to some of the Diamond Dude and use its effect, in doing so, it's going to send the Delta Hurricane to the uh, top of the deck to the graveyard, sets another Zoma face down, and then passes turn off to me. Drawing for turn, I draw into the Zoma Spirit, use the uh, Cyber Dark style to grab the, the Horn, the Edge, and the Claw. The Claw gets added to hand here. See, what would have happened here is uh, I could have activated the Zoma, set it face down. Uh, if I would have gotten any of the other two pieces and not claw, I could have foolish there and sent the other one to the graveyard, and then I could have Cyber Dark Impact and had my 5500 beater. So that would have been crazy. But oh well. Putting the fusion back to the top of the deck, discarding the claw to grab the fusion. Yeah, we all know how this goes. <laughs> uh, entering into the battle phase and attacking for 2400, but they're going to Rising Energy here, discarding one, and then. Uh, yeah. I'll take the damage here and everything for a total of 500 damage. They'll draw for turn, use the effect of the Delta Hurricane, destroy everything on my field, and that's going to be game there. Don't think I actually quit right away, but it is definitely going to be game at this point. So, going into game three, uh, drawing for turn, I opt to make the opponent go second, or first, I mean. Uh, they've milled the toss because of their deck being Wall, Ojama Delta Hurricane, and the beginning of the end opting to put the uh, wall to the hand, and then the Ojama Delta Hurricane is going to be the last card they set. Summoning the Destiny Hero Diamond Dune, using its effect to mill off the Ojama Delta Hurricane, setting one card face down, and then passing turn off to the opponent. I draw for turn, drawing for the, into the wall of disruption, go to standby phase and use a Cosmic Cyclone here, banishing the wall of disruption by paying a thousand life points. I use my skill here, this is going to allow me to pick three cards from my deck, and then one gets randomly added to my hand. And then the opponent chooses to add the Cyber Dark Horn to hand. I'm going to add the Foolish back to the deck, set the uh, offering face down, and then pass turn off to the opponent, uh, who draws into the beginning of the end. The reason why I didn't do anything after setting the uh, offering face down is because they have the Hurricane. So uh, they go into their uh, main phase, use the effect of Ojama Delta Hurricane by chain offerings to the Doomed to destroy the Diamond Dude. Uh, reinforcements of the army is then activated. This is going to add one, uh, probably Diamond Dude, correct? 
and so Diamond Dude is going to be added to hand. They're going to summon the Diamond Dude here, use its effect here, and then mill off the top card of the deck, but it's just a DD Warrior Lady. So the worst case scenario here is they inflict 1400 damage to me, which I'll take. Uh, I draw for I can't draw for turn because of offerings. Go into my standby phase, main phase one, and then I will use my Foolish Burial. This is going to send my Cyber Dark Claw to the graveyard, and then I'm going to summon my Cyber Dark Horn to the field using its effect to eclipse the Claw, and then also setting the Wall of Disruption phase down. Moving into the battle phase here, I'll attack for 2400 into their 14, making them drop 1000 life points, passing turn to the opponent, and they draw into a Delta Hurricane. Nothing they can really do here, so they look at the top 3 cards of the deck being Lost Wind, Summons a Spirit, and Ojama Delta Hurricane, probably putting that Hurricane right on top of the deck, since they don't have access to the, uh, yeah to the Diamond Dude, and then putting the Zoma as the card they, they draw next turn. They go ahead and pass turn off to me, to which I draw into the Wall of Disruption. I use uh, my Cyber Dark style skill, and then uh, I, he admits defeat here and leaves the duel, but I go ahead and use my skill anyway to show you what I would have done. This is the Edge, the Kneel, and the Claw. This is going to add the Kneel to hand, and then some of the Kneel, the uh, Wall of Disruption gets added back to deck. And then this is game here. So it's 24 and 800 being enough to climb the 3,000 life points with nothing to draw. Bad, bad brick for them for the last game. But hey, I was able to pull through for that. But if you guys like this type of content, make sure you leave a like on the video. If you like me, make sure you subscribe. And above all, I want you to have a great day. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.